Hello there, welcome back to I Care For Your Brain. This is me, Dr. Karen Sullivan, board certified neuropsychologist. Very happy to be with you for our weekly free brain health lecture. We try to pick topics here that are of importance to you, the brain health community. Sometimes we get real specific and other times we try to be more general to include everyone. And tonight's topic is one of those general topics. So we are gonna be talking about the word wellness. What does that mean to me? What does it mean to you? What should it mean? How can you incorporate it more into your everyday life? This is a new word, kind of a buzzword, that refers to self-care, other care, how it is that we try to be intentional with our time and our actions to support our well-being. We all know that wellness sounds good, right? But the question is how can we more practically bring it into our everyday lives? It can be a struggle to combat the inertia of depression, anxiety, your specific brain health challenge to plan to do wellness properly. We can create a lot of barriers in our mind. You know, I don't have the right shoes. I don't have the right equipment. I can't afford the right foods. So I want to talk to you tonight about a new way of thinking about wellness in a way that is very practical and helps make it much more accessible to your in your everyday life. And this is called micro wellness. And so you might get from the name that this means approaching wellness in short little bursts throughout the day. What is wonderful is that the research is letting us know that even when people do wellness in this kind of abbreviated condensed way, that we are still seeing a lot of the healthy benefits. So maybe it's not that we need to develop wellness practices that take, you know, 45 minutes to an hour out of our lives, but maybe we can do it in a little bit of a shorter way that's more realistic. Of course, more would be better, but we are talking now about being realistic, which is one of my values as a mental health care provider, is that we have to talk about these things in a way that people feel like is actually within their reach. So let's define wellness. What exactly does it mean? Well, uh, there is a Global Wellness Institute. I went to their website and they talked about it being an active pursuit of activities, choices and lifestyle that lead to a state of holistic health. Doesn't that sound wonderful? They emphasize that wellness is different for each person, but what it always has to involve is getting out of being passive and just wanting to feel better, wanting to be healthier, and actually having actions and intentions behind those pursuits. So they talk about it as being more aware, making better, more informed personal choices that leads you towards whatever your definition of optimal health is. So I know that any type of new habit or new commitment starts with something that is important to you. There has to be something on the line. So a great chance uh, that we have tonight together is to think about what is your why, right? Why would you want to feel more well? <laughs> is it for you only? Is it for the benefit of your family, the benefit of your job, your productivity? you know, the world, uh, you, you're holding back your gifts from the world, right? When you don't feel well, it makes us feel much less energetic to share what we do best. So you can have a wide variety of reasons to want to commit to wellness. So what's important is that you articulate that for yourself and set that intention. And so the intention can just be, I will make better choices, not that I will make the best choices. And that really uh, plays when we start talking about diet, right? It's, we can't have an all or nothing feeling. Same thing with exercise. It can't be either do it three, four times a week or you don't do it at all. What we're trying to find is little small ways that we can incorporate this into our everyday life to help us feel better. So wellness is not one thing, it's multiple moving parts. There are models of wellness that typically include six different elements from physical to mental to emotional, spiritual, social, and environmental. So there's little wellness activities you can do throughout the day that will, when added together, give you that sense of peace and well-being that we are all looking for. Wellness is not reactive. It's not waiting until you're stressed and then doing something to bring yourself down. It is proactive. And this has been talked about all the way from the 1970s. There was a doctor named Jack Travis who had a book called The Illness Wellness Continuum. And he talked about disease and poor health being on one end of the spectrum and optimal well-being on the other. 
And the way he helped me think of it uh, in my research was kind of a little bit like cognitive reserve, which is a concept we've talked about in terms of neuroplasticity and brain health, which means that there are proactive things that you can do today that will give you a deposit in your brain health wellness in the future. Things you can do today that will give you a deposit for your wellness in the future. So making those deposits every day is, is involved with things like sleep, stress management, what we eat, staying hydrated, strained relationships. All of these things over time kind of take withdrawals from our wellness deposit receptacle, our bank. And so we're trying to kind of constantly fill it up. So the focus tonight is on this micro practice. So how does that come in? Well, a micro practice uh, can take just a few seconds or a few minutes. And the idea is trying to not get intimidated by the commitment to wellness. For some people, it's very easy and they can incorporate a meditation practice, a regular exercise practice, you know, always pretty much eat right, uh, drink enough water. But for other people, it is a struggle. And I think some of us hold back because we can't do it 100%. So a micro practice is just taking advantage of a moment to do something rather than nothing, okay? So some of the best micro practices just involve of taking a moment of stillness of mindfulness to just check in with yourself um, this is something that's written about in the research to just check your breath right and a lot of times when we are stressed we are breathing kind of from right up here just taking three deep belly breaths can reset us noticing how like physically we are being in our bodies and in the world when we're kind of slumped over uh, which I'm guilty of doing all the time that can be a sign of kind of you know, literally too much on your shoulders and you're kind of stressed out and then you get a lot of back pain and muscle pain. So just sitting here for 30 seconds at different points in my day, rubbing my shoulders back, it really can make a big difference as the stress accumulates or not in me and my body throughout the day. Just checking in sometimes about hunger. Do, do I need nourishment? Am I thirsty? Right? When you go for a snack, doesn't have to be the extreme, right? So you know, one cookie over three cookies is always going to be better, right? Trying to get away from that extreme thinking of that all or nothing. So one of the best micro practices that's been supported in the research is checking in with our emotions and just simply labeling them and then saying them either in our own mind or out loud. So just checking in, you know, at various points in the day, am I feeling satisfied? Am I upset? Am I angry? Am I worried? Am I jealous? Am I exhausted? Naming the feelings increases our self-awareness and helps us with emotional regulation. A lot of times when we're not realizing how we're feeling, that's when it can all build up and we're like a volcano and it kind of blows over. So you can feel more in control of yourself every day if you just check in with that feeling and then tell yourself, this is how I'm feeling and I have a right to feel that way. It's really okay. A good clue to check in with yourself is anytime your thinking gets extreme. So if you feel like you're on a complaining jag or you feel like you can't stop being sad about different things, trying to balance that with a micro moment of gratitude, trying to balance those negative thoughts by thinking, you know, almost any bad situation has one aspect in it that could be perceived as positive or validating or could make you feel better. Trying to really develop the habit of zoning in on that can be really, really helpful. The goal with a micro wellness practice is to tie it to something you do every day. So you brush your teeth every day, I hope. You use hand sanitizer nowadays multiple times a day. You're waiting online for lunch somewhere. You're eating. Uh, one I read that was great is before you pick up the phone to go on the internet, do three deep breaths. Before you respond to a text, think of something that you're grateful for. So every time you do it, you want it to be tied with that micro practice. So over time, it becomes automatic. It doesn't have to be something um, that is a super big deal. So I thought of one today as I was preparing for this time together. Um, I uh, love oranges and clementines. And so I tend to have one about once a day. And typically it's while I'm doing something else and I don't even really take a minute to appreciate it. But today I thought, okay, I got to practice what I preach here. So as I was peeling the orange, I was being very mindful of how amazing that orange smelled. And so it might've looked funny if somebody would have come in and see me, but I had the orange peel shoved up to my nose and I was just taking three deep breaths. 
And you know, it's not life changing, but you know, does it make me then feel a little boost? It makes me remember how amazing nature is. It makes me feel grateful that I'm able to have this fresh, sweet fruit with me today. So this is what we're talking about. They're just little tiny things where if you're more intentional with your time, you can over the course of the day, build up a little resistance to the chronic stress that gets all of us. So these are evidence-based practices. When we look at MRI studies, it tells us these small efforts throughout the day shifts our brain activity from the reactive emotional place of the amygdala and helps get us back more to frontal organization and functioning. So we are literally more logical, more rational, better decision makers when we take time to decompress throughout the day. Diaphragmatic breathing has been studied a lot, and there is statistically significant improvements in stress reduction and blood pressure, self-reported stress levels, when people just throughout the day do three deep breaths. It's really not that hard. These deep breaths activate the parasympathetic nervous system to help physiologically promote calmness and relaxation. These small changes might seem kind of trivial, but again, we all know hypothetically we should do these things, but actually putting them into practice is practical in these micro practice ways and can be sustained over time. It's free, it's portable. So I want to know, for those of you listening to me, what are you going to commit to right now? Okay, you're, you're telling me, so you gotta make good on your promise. What exactly is it that you will do to bring more of these brief moments of wellness into your life? So in addition to being mindful, every time I have a piece, really it's all citrus, I really like citrus. So every time I have a piece of citrus, I'm really gonna focus on the smell and how much I love it. Um, also lately, I have been trying to, uh, in between my patients throughout the day, I'm trying to just do a quick walk around my driveway, uh, in addition to taking taking longer walks when I can. I thought, you know, even if three times a day I got up from my desk, just did a quick walk around my house, I think that would just be better than nothing more as opposed to, to nothing, it would be something. So these are just tiny little, you know, things that we don't even value. But I promise you, if you can incorporate them into your everyday life, you just, you know, walk a little taller, feel a little bit more in charge of you and what you're doing in life. So please let me know. I would appreciate you sharing this video with any of our other folks on live uh, on Facebook. Also, I think it would probably be a wise idea to also follow us on YouTube. Um, just, you know, always wanting to make sure that we stay in touch with you all, um, just in case anything happens with Facebook. Uh, I would be not a very good uh, promoter if I didn't say that on November 11th, we have our second to last brain school. We are focusing on sleep. This is something that a lot of you have concerns about. So it's a 90 minute lecture, a 68 page accompanying workbook, and the link to sign up will be in the comments. So November 11th uh, starts at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We typically go about 90 minutes and conclude with a nice question and answer session at the end. So we're gonna talk about why people don't sleep, the value of sleep for brain health with a focus on how it affects memory and mood. For those of you who struggle with sleep, I think you will find this very, very helpful. Thank you all so much. Please go on with your wellness practice and let me know how it goes. I will see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.